the story of Dr. Kildare. Whatsoever house I enter, there will I go for the benefit of the sick. Or whatsoever things I see or hear concerning the life of men, I will keep silence thereon, counting such things to be held as sacred trust. I will exercise my art solely for the cure of... The story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers and Lionel Barrymore. Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer brought you those famous motion pictures. Now this exciting, heartwarming series is heard on radio. In just a moment, the story of Dr. Kildare. Now, the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. Blair General Hospital, one of the great citadels of American medicine. A clump of gray-white buildings planted deep in the heart of New York, the nerve center of medical progress where great minds and skilled hands wage man's everlasting battle against death and disease. Blair General Hospital, where life begins, where life ends, where life goes on. Jeepers. I gotta get some advice. Blair General Hospital. Uh, uh, hello, this is Joe Wayman. I gotta talk to Doc Kildare right away. Step on it, huh? Okay, don't flip your lid. Kildare speaking. Uh, boss, uh, this is Joe Wayman. Oh, hello, Joe. Uh, Doc, you know that uh, that call I got to pick up some dame over here on the east side and bring her back to the hospital? Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Well, there ain't no address like that. I asked all up and down the block. Well, must have been somebody's idea of a practical joke. May as well forget it and come on yeah, back. Well, but, Doc, I, uh, I ain't told you the payoff yet. When I got back into the ambulance, guess what I just found in the front seat? Uh, how should I know what you found? A baby, Doc. A baby? Sure. Somebody must be giving him away. Here I am, minding my own business. All at once, I got a baby. Confounded. Child's wrapped up like a mummy. Here, Parker, Parker. See if you can get him out of this thing. All right, Dr. Gillespie. Here now, everything's going to be all right. There now. That uh, thing he's wrapped in, Parker, isn't that the jacket to a woman's suit? Why, yes, it is, Dr. Kildare. Some kind of a wool plaid, I think. Or it was once. It is rather worn at that. Uh, so is this baby, Kildare. He's been suffering from malnutrition for a good long time. Here, young fella. Here, let's have a look at you. Could I see that jacket, Parker? Oh, of course, Dr. Kildare. <laughs> Gosh, he's a cute little dickens, ain't he? Uh, can you imagine anybody just leaving him with me like that? Not if they believed in the influence of environment. And you don't have any business up here, Wayman, so get out. Oh, Japheth, Doc. I mean, sir, I feel like I was kind of responsible for the little shaver. Well, you can experience the joys of motherhood just as well in the ambulance room as you can here. Go and beat it. Oh, gosh. I never get to be in on nothing. Nobody else is. Dr. Gillespie, it looks as though you can get ready to experience a few of those joys yourself. What the tarnation are you talking about? Well, there was a note in the pocket of this jacket. And it says, uh, quote, I have nothing to live for, but my baby has his whole life ahead. He needs help. So I give him to Dr. Gillespie at Blair Hospital to do with as he sees fit. And it's signed, Jackie's mother. By the great horns. No, oh, good heavens. Another abandoned child. No, this is more a transfer of ownership, Parker. Well, doctor... This one seems to be your case. Confound it. Parker, yeah. take the boy over to one of the examination rooms and strip him down, and I'll be over there in about five minutes. All right, Doctor. Come on, young man. Now let's go get cleaned up now. Jimmy, unless that baby has some fast medical attention and a lot of luck, we'll have a corpse instead of a case. Maybe two corpses. Two? Jackie's mother. Hmm? I don't know who she is, but I'm betting she needs help and needs it fast. 
A woman's in pretty serious trouble when she's willing to give a child away. Yes, it's generally considered the last resort. And then we've got to try and find her. That next step after the last resort could be anything. Hello, Wayman. Yeah. Oh, this is Kildare. Oh, uh, uh, hiya, boss. Say, uh, Detective Lieutenant is on his way up here to see me. Yeah. It's in regard to the mother of that baby you found. Uh-huh. Now, will you stand by, Joe? He may want to talk to you. Yeah, okay, sure. I've got a hunch we have to find this girl right away, if we find her at all. Yeah? Oh, just a second, Joe. You're right. Yes, Parker, what is it? A Lieutenant Dan Riley from Precinct Headquarters is here to see you. Oh, fine. Send him in. He's here now, Joe. Yeah. See you later. Yeah, okay, boss. Come on in, Lieutenant. Thanks. Sit down. Got here in a hurry. Yeah. I understood somebody over here was burning up to have this girl found. You, by any chance? That's right. Why? How come you're so worked up about it? Well, I... I think a girl who's forced to abandon a child needs help, that's all. Can't help her unless I find her. It's simple enough, isn't it? Yeah, when you say it real fast. That the jacket there the kid was wrapped in? Yes. Well, that's our best bet, but the odds are long. Exactly where was it your driver left his ambulance parked? Uh, Let's see. I have it here on the report. On the east side of First Avenue, about 100 feet north of Dutton Place. He went into the apartment houses at 1042 and 1046. What was the time? The call came in here at uh, 624. Joe got there at 6.45 and was away from the ambulance for about uh, 10 minutes. Well, I'll see what I can do, Kildare. Looks like a matter of trying to match the suit material. Somebody may recognize it, and a girl may still be wearing the skirt. Do you know that neighborhood? I know it. A bunch of flop houses, honky-tonks, clip joints, typical skid row. Mostly floaters and -and down-and-outers. Yeah, I know it all right. Well, don't count on anything, Kildare. All right, I won't. We can't both be over-enthusiastic... Okay, so you're all fired up to do a good deed. Suppose we do find her and give the kid back to her. She had some reason to dump him in the first place, and she'll do the same thing again. Only the next time, she'll make sure of it, and we'll probably fish him out of the river. So, what's the percentage? Pretty low. Only sometimes you can change the percentage by stepping in and helping at the right time. Doctor learns to make his own odds. This is one case, Doc. I've seen a thousand of them just like it. Cynical, aren't you? You get that way if you keep your eyes open and watch human nature. Mm -hmm. Well, I usually do. Helps in diagnosis. I've developed a theory from it, as a matter of fact. A theory, huh? Mm Mm-hmm. The more soft-hearted a person is, the more chance he'll try to throw up a hard-boiled front. Yeah. Well, everybody's got a right to his own opinion. Kildare, I'll give you a call if I turn up anything. I don't know, Jimmy. Right now, it's a toss-up. I'm going to keep him under oxygen tonight. We'll try to keep his lungs clear, but... Well, I don't know. Talk about percentages. Now it's bronchial pneumonia. On top of anemia, malnutrition, a deficiency of every vitamin from A to Z. Yes, and abandoned besides. Oh, I just can't understand how any mother could do such a thing. Parker, the limitations of your intellect are quite well known already. Well, I like that. He's got to find that girl. I suppose he does. Maybe all we can tell her is that her baby just died. Yes, there's a chance of that. (laughs) Dr. Kildare speaking. Lieutenant Riley, I picked up the girl's trail, Kildare. I thought maybe you might like to come over and string along with me. Where are you? A flop house called Hogan's Rooms. It's on first, just below Delaney. I'll be in room 38. Come on up. Be there in ten minutes. She and the kid lived here for three days, Kildare. She paid for the room in advance for the first two days and then skipped out around six this evening. She owed the proprietor one day's rent, 25 cents. That's what a room in this flea bag cost. And I'll make you a bet, Riley. You paid that two bets, didn't you? She didn't have any luggage, no visitors. There's nothing in the room that gives any lead on her. She brought in a quart of milk yesterday, the empty bottle's over there in the corner. Hmm. 25-cent room, quart of milk, alone, nothing to live for, and she gives her baby away. Add it up. 
When a dame dumps her kid, it's usually one of two reasons. A new boyfriend or she's down and out. I'd say this one's the down and out kind. Well, you have a description of her now. That ought to help a little. Maybe. She's still wearing a skirt to this jacket. A faded blue sweater with it. She's blonde, thin, 20, 21. I sent out an APB. One of the cars may pick her up. I thought we'd check some of the cafes around here. All right, let's go. Okay. Oh, by the way, she was registered as Eleanor Mason. From where? From nowhere. Around here, nobody cares. Look, Riley, suppose we get something straight right now. All right, shoot. You wanted me to see this place for one reason. Because you think I'm a hothouse boy living in a plush and chrome office up at Blair Hospital without ever realizing just how rough life can get. Well, do you? Riley... I worked in a clinic less than six blocks from here while I was interning, and at one time or another, I've been inside all these tenements and flop houses. I've treated hundreds of these people, suicides, alcoholics, dope fiends. I know what they're up against and what you're up against. There are no arguments on that score. All right. But here's the difference between us. You think the problem's too big for any one person to tackle, and I think the only way we can ever hope to whip it is to keep on trying. That's why I'm on the staff at Blair instead of running a, a gold-plated pill factory of my own somewhere up on Park Avenue. Okay, Kildare, sorry. A guy can be wrong, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's right, a guy can be wrong. All right, let's check those cafes. <laughs> Well, as far as I can tell, the child is still holding his own, Jimmy. Good. I don't really expect a crisis before tomorrow night. We're doing everything we can, but he simply doesn't have any reserve strength to fall back on. So, well, I don't know. Incidentally, his last name is Mason. I found out that much, at least. Yeah, but you, you didn't find his mother. No. No, we traced her as far as a cafe on 10th Street, where she had a cup of coffee a couple of hours ago. Cashier remembered her because she had just four cents. The coffee was a nickel. Then she's flat broke. And she can't travel very far on foot. As far as eternity, if that's what she has in mind. <laughs> well, she's desperate enough. That's what Riley thinks. I left him over there a while ago, still at it. He's a good man. It's too bad he's got that cynical attitude. Well, with him working the district and the whole police force alerted, there's still a chance, Jimmy. There's got to be a chance. You know, it's funny. I've never seen this girl, and yet all at once, she's the most important thing in the world. <laughs> Kildare speaking. Lieutenant Riley. Look, Kildare, I'm at Pier 21 East River. You better get over here. What's happened? We just pulled the Mason girl out of the river. I'd say the odds give her about 15 minutes to live. I thought I told you the one about a doctor making his own odds. I'll be there. Hang on. <laughs> In just a moment, we will return to the story of Dr. Kildare. You see, uh, the, there's a red spotlight at the edge of the dock. All right, come on, Joe. Yeah. Bring my kit, will you? Yeah, okay, Doc. They, they uh, must have picked her up in one of the police boats. Yeah. Now watch the planks, oh, eh? Hey, 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 yeah, yeah, sure. Over here, Kildare. She's still alive? How do I know? You're the doctor. All right, let's have a look. No, no, no. Keep feeding her oxygen. Well, what do you think? 
There's still a chance. Heart stimulant may help. Joe, hand me that kit. Yeah, okay, Doc. We got most of the water out before we gave her the oxygen. Here, hold this, Joe. Where'd she jump from? Bridge over there. A patrolman saw her and called the river patrol. We picked her up with a searchlight and we had her out in six or seven minutes. I was on the boat. Yeah, so I gathered. Now then. There. How's her baby? Pretty bad. Won't know for about 24 hours yet. Hey, you're pretty, isn't she? Yes. You will be in the newspapers, anyhow. They're always beautiful in the papers. <laughs> Is this doll would be a knockout any place. All right, so she's a doll. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, she's coming, too. Riley, how did you happen to be riding that boat? That was a lucky guess. With a dame, it's usually gas, poison, or the river. For gas, you need a room, and a room costs money. So does poison. I took a chance on the river. We've been patrolling this area for the last hour. Mm-hmm. All right, take the respirator off. See if she can make it alone. Now, Joe, start her out with artificial respiration. You're right, boss. Easy, easy now. There we are. All right, now, honey, let's you and me start breathing. Hello. You're Larry speaking. Good morning, Gildare. Lieutenant Riley. Morning. Hey, what time is it, anyway? Six o'clock. How's that Mason girl getting along? Ah, how do I know? You just woke me up. I'm not on 24-hour duty around here, you know. Yeah. Well, I gotta fill out my report, and I was just wondering if I could come up there and see her. It's six o'clock in the morning? Riley, go back to bed and get some more sleep. I'll call you when she's able to talk, and that'll probably be noon or after, Okay. Well, as long as you make it as soon as possible, but Sure, I know, I know. You've got to fill out a report. So long, Riley. Well. Good morning, Mrs. Mason. I'm Dr. Kildare. I remember you from last night. How are you feeling? All right, I guess. Jackie, my baby, how is he? He's in Dr. Gillespie's hands, Mrs. Mason. And believe me, they're very capable hands. You're not to worry about him. But he was supposed to pick an up. You I... picked Dr. Gillespie yourself, remember? Yes. I saw his name in a newspaper. And I was so frightened and, and so desperate. I, I didn't know what to do. I can understand that. You're from outside the city, aren't you? Mm-hmm. From a farm in Ohio. I ran away and got married. It's a big mistake. He came here to New York and he left me two months before Jackie was born. I've never seen him again. There now. It's all over. Everything's going to be all right. But it isn't all right. It isn't over at all. Nothing's any different than it was before. Why did you have to bring me back? Now, you don't mean that, you know. I'll give you ten to one. You changed your mind before you hit the water. But it's all so hopeless. Oh, what's Good morning, Gildare. Oh, come in, Dr. Gillespie. Well, so this is the fish you pulled out of the East River last night. How do you do, sir? Hmm. I'll have to get some bait myself. Maybe another one like you. Well, this particular fish seems to think we ought to throw her back. Ah, nonsense. I had too much trouble catching her in the first place. Dr. Gillespie, my baby, how is he? Young lady, I never discuss the condition of patients with other patients. And you are a patient. Besides, he's my baby. You but, gave him to me. Yes, but I, but I thought that... Come in. Well, Lieutenant Riley. Uh, so there, I thought maybe that you forgot to call me and... I've got yeah, to... I know. You've got to make out a report. Official business. Well, I guess you don't need to be introduced here. I don't know whether you'll remember me, Miss Mason. Oh, yes. It's your voice. I remember hearing it when I was in the water. You were so kind and gentle. Yeah. Well, uh, if you feel like talking, Miss Mason, I 
have to get some things for my final report, so... Dr. Gillespie, I think we're going to be in the way here. Well, I never like to interfere with official business, Jimmy. Shall we go? Oh, oh, pardon me. By the way, Lieutenant Riley, the commissioner called me a while ago and said he was glad the case had turned out all right. He'd just been reading your final report. Dr. Gillespie, it's after midnight. Isn't there any sign of a break yet? No, Jim. His temperature is still rising. May not have reached the peak for two hours yet. The worst part is always this waiting. Poor little boy. Well, we've given him everything medicine has to offer. But that's as far as we can go, Jimmy. Nobody can get inside that oxygen tent and help him fight. It's his battle from here on. His and, well... Dr. Kildare. Hmm? Lieutenant Riley's outside in the hall. Back again? All right, Parker, stand by here. I'll be right back, Dr. Glassby. Yes. Yeah. Hello, Riley. Yeah, sorry to bother you, Kildare, but how's the baby? Too soon to tell you. Would you mind if I sort of hang around here in the hall? Better yet, go on down and stay with Mrs. Mason. Will that be okay? I mean, I know it's way past visiting hours. Special case, Riley. We, uh, we had to tell her late this evening how serious this is. There's a nurse with her, of course, but... Well, you go on down and talk to her. All right, Kildare. Thanks. For what? Anything? Nothing? I don't know. I'll see you later. Oh, thank you, Dr. Kilbert. Thank you. <laughs> there now, Mrs. Mason. Everything's going to be all right. Oh, I'm so happy. I'm going to cry. Easy now, honey. Confound it. The simple statement of a fact is no reason for hysterics. The boy's going to live and has a good chance of growing up to be president or a bank robber or a gin rummy place, something or other. Oh, Dr. Gillespie. And you, Dr. Kilder, thank you, both of you, for saving him. For saving me. I... I don't know what else to say. Ah! Uh. Kildare, you stay here and listen to this gush if you want to. I'm going to bed. No sleep for two nights. People giving away babies and jumping off bridges. Good night. Looks like the dawn's starting to break out there. Might as well turn these lights off, I guess. Oh, it's beautiful. So fresh and clean. It's a wonderful world. Hmm. You didn't think so yesterday. Do you promise to keep on believing it tomorrow? Yes. Oh, yes. Don't worry, Kildare. I kind of think she will. I want to know something, Riley. I kind of think you will, too. <laughs> Tough guy. In just a moment, we will return to the story of Dr. Kildare. Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. Come in, Mrs. Mason. Come in, come in. Thank you, Dr. Gillespie. Shh, quiet, Jackie. Uh, I understand you're leaving us today. Yes, that's right. But not without saying goodbye to you and Dr. Kildare. Well, it certainly looks to me as though mother and son are doing nicely. Oh, Dr. Kildare, 
No, I, I'm not going to say it all over again. You know what I mean. Well, I'm glad you came in here, Mrs. Mason. I've been wanting to talk to you before you left. I know you don't have any place to stay, so I thought oh, we might arrange... Thank you, Dr. Gillespie, but... Well, Lieutenant Riley has already taken care of that. I'm going to stay with his sister and her husband for a while. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, well, about money. Now. Well, money? Lieutenant Riley's already loaned me some money. Enough to last until I start working. Working? Now, there might be just a chance of a job here at the hospital if you... Dr. Gillespie, I understand Lieutenant Riley has already arranged for a stenographic position at precinct headquarters. Yes, mm. that's right, Dr. Kildare. A confound it. I suppose you two are going to get married then. Yes. Well, not right away, of course, but... That, then may I buy you a silver tea service? Well, if... If you could make it something else. You see, Lieutenant Riley's grandmother left him a... Quite a great horn spoon. Well, I mean, I appreciate your thinking of these things, Dr. Gillespie, but I... Oh, no. Oh, golly. I'm sorry, but do you mind awfully if I use your table here to... Go right ahead, Mrs. Mason. As a matter of fact, I'm overjoyed to find one thing that Lieutenant Riley hasn't thought of already. You have just heard the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers and Lionel Barrymore. This program was written by Les Crutchfield and directed by William P. Russo. Original music was composed and conducted by Walter Schumann. Supporting cast included Virginia Gregg, Ed Max, Jack Webb, Lillian Bieff, and Jerry Hausner. Dick Joy speaking. Mm -hmm.